Good afternoon, everyone. May the peace of the Lord be with you all today. Um, it's a little bit so special for us. Two, two great saints we celebrate. We uh, have in our calendar St. Dionysius the Areopagite and St. Therese of Lisieux of Little Jesus. I would like to take, before talking about the gospel reading, just a few uh, spiritual advice from St. Therese. She was a Carmelite nun. And in her journey in a monastery and her journey to holiness, she used to do little things, not great things. And in her, in her perspective, when we do little things with love, it's enough. Sometimes we would like to do great things and to make people, to make people happy or in return expecting something from them. But as for her, no matter what it is, small or great a job, do it in love. Even when you do things in the church, sometimes when you pick up something from the ground in, in the church, this is a great thing that you did when you do it in love. From St. Dionysius, the Areopagite, this is, uh, we're talking about fifth, the year 53 after the resurrection, and he became a great saint and bishop of Athens after he met with St. Paul, the apostles, and from him he converted into Christianity. The, the beautiful things of Dionysius the Areopagite, we call him Areopagite because of the, um, the Areopagos where in Athens, the great building, the court, where the philosophers and all the lawyers and all the judges used to meet there in this, in this place. And he was one of them. And when Paul entered the Areopagos to teach them about the unknown God. When he went to Athens to speak about Jesus Christ, he tried to find a green light or a door to start with. And he found a statue, but it's, there is no statue, but just a, a stone written on it for the unknown God. And from there, he got the idea, okay, I have something to start with. Get inside, and the Onesios were there, uh, Rosaios, one of them, so two great saints, and he started to talk about Jesus, that unknown God, the one who became man, crucified, died, rise again. When he concludes in this conclusion to say, died and rise again, all the people inside, great philosophers, lawyers, and judges, they stood up and said, we'll listen to you next time please leave us. But Dionysius understood what Paul was saying because he said the time when Jesus was crucified, Dionysius saying this, I was in Egypt. I was studying there. The time when Jesus on the mountain of Golgotha in the crucifixion, on the, on the cross, and he saw that the earth, earthquake, the dark cloud, and the darkness that covered the earth, at that moment, Dionysius was in Egypt. And he felt that something's going wrong on earth. He said, maybe this is the end of the world. Or some of the gods, one of the gods, is doing something before met with Paul. Then, when he met with Paul and heard Paul talking about Jesus Christ, crucified, died, rise again, then he felt, this is 
the God, I, I felt that something happened to him. And he approached St. Paul and told him, this is what happened to me when I was in Egypt uh, doing some studies there. And he converted into Christianity. Then after that, he became the first bishop of Athens in the year 53. Uh, and then Dionysius and Horaceus, these both of them wrote something about the Dormition of Our Lady. That's why we rely on the fathers when we say about our fathers of the saints. They wrote something about, they heard it, and Horaceus was there uh, when he heard Paul and St. John, the beloved, about the, the, the feast of uh, the time when Mary um, uh, laid down, uh, repose, and transferred into heaven, body, and soul. So we have fathers to witness about the truth of what we believe. When we speak, we don't speak just history. We speak about how things, we inherited the things from the past to us. In the gospel reading today, when we look, um, when we look uh, in the mirror, what do we say? Is it the face of Adam? Let's say you're standing in the front of mirror and try to think is it the face of Adam bound with resentment and hate? Or is it the face of Christ ready to forgive and therefore open to a new future? So maybe this is the question we need every time we need to ask. Am I able to act and do things Jesus told me to do? Remember, Jesus, God, Jesus, my Savior, Jesus, my Redeemer, told me to do. There is no question. Because you're taking this from your Lord, from your Creator. When He said, I need, He told me, I need to forgive. I need to wipe the, the old stuff, all the sins, all the hatred that I have in my heart. I have to, have to wipe them out. It, to say that we should love our enemy. To, good, to do good things to those who hate us has always been the most difficult part of the gospel message. Believe me. This is the very difficult part. From me and on. Sometimes I found it hard. But I need to ask that God, please give me power. Give me the strength. Give me something at, at least to act like you. To do things you told me to do. To forgive others is very hard. But once I say I believe, I belong, I am a follower of Jesus Christ, he put the church, and from the church, what do we have to do? There are three things. Sometimes we say, God need nothing in return. I'm telling you, yes, he needs, he needs in something in return. Maybe this will surprise you. Three things. He said, be holy as I am holy. Be merciful as your Father in heaven is merciful. Forgive others' sins as your Father in heaven forgave your sins. These are the three things we have to do in life and in the church this is the three things the main three things we have to do when you say i belong to the body of christ this is the church you have to achieve these things that's the great things to give back to god he is the creator of everything and if you want to give him something in return he needs nothing only three things forgiveness holiness and be merciful. And in this way, you act as God acted in the world. He sent his son on the cross to forgive and to wipe your sins. How come? 
I'm not able to do that. Please, Lord, help us to understand the meaning of forgiveness. From the beginning of the creation, you told us about forgiveness. And through the journey in this history, you send your only begotten son. On the cross, your son said, forgive them their sins because they don't know what they're doing. And he gave this order to the church. And as we are the members of this body, we have to do things as you told us to do. Amen.